It's no secret that Nutella has some raving fans. Take World Nutella Day for example. It was created by a woman who was so passionate about the chocolatey spread that she created a holiday for it. When the first Nutella cafe opened in Chicago, people lined up for hours to get inside. And in France, the courts recently had to stop a couple from naming their daughter after the product. Yep, everyone knows and loves Nutella. It's taken over the world. But while everyone knows about the spread, very few know about its creator, who happens to be the richest man in Italy. In this video, we'll dive deep into the mysterious life of Giovanni Ferrero and his chocolatey empire. Ever wonder what it would be like to own your own chocolate factory? You know, like Willy Wonka? Well, Giovanni Ferrero knows exactly how this feels. That's because he owns a chocolate empire that does over $14 billion in revenue. Kinder Eggs, Tic Tacs, Ferrero Rocher, and of course Nutella are all cash cows for Ferrero. The company has 25 production plants in 55 countries. Inside each of these factories, a choreograph of chocolatey sweetness takes place under the watchful gaze of employees. And the result is an enormous amount of chocolate. Just talking about Nutella, these factories pump out about 400,000 tons of it every year and use about a quarter of the world's hazelnuts. And as a result of this production process, we get a delicious treat, the company gets billions of dollars in revenue, which makes it the world's second largest candy maker. And Giovanni, the 57 year old youthful novel writing brainiac owner is the Willy Wonka running everything behind the scenes. But the story of how he became owner of the giant company is nothing like the Willy Wonka you know. It starts in a tiny Italian village in World War II and ends with the sudden death of his brother and father. Nutella was the product that launched the company to greatness, but its beginnings were extremely humble. It begins in the quiet village of Alba, located in northern Italy. It was World War II, and chocolate was a luxury. Because it was scarce, not many people could afford it. So Giovanni's grandfather, Pietro, had an idea. He began to mix a little cocoa with hazelnut oil, molasses and cocoa butter, and he sold the mixture around town. This was not quite the Nutella we know and love today. This homemade experiment in sweetness was wrapped in wax paper and came in the form of a hard loaf. So it wasn't exactly Nutella, but that didn't matter. People loved it. And by 1949, with the war over, Pietro and his brother Giovanni went into to business together, selling the product across Italy. They called their company Ferrero after their last name. Sadly, Pietro died just a couple of years later, but Giovanni took over and with some changes, he expanded the business. He turned the loaf into a spreadable cream. He sold the product in pots and jars that the customers could reuse. And he sold the jars directly in stores rather than going through a middleman. But then Giovanni died. Like his brother before him, he was the victim of a heart attack, something that clearly runs in this family. So it was left to Giovanni's 33 year old son Michele to become the new head of the company. Michele transformed the relatively small family run company into a giant. How did he manage this? Well, for starters, he turned abandoned Nazi missile factories into candy factories and he he invented Mon Cherry, a cherry liqueur filled chocolate that he sold all over post-war Germany. And from there, he did what Hitler couldn't. He conquered the world. Ferrero moved into France, Belgium, Switzerland and Ireland, but that was just the beginning. By the 1960s, with World War II over and chocolate supplies rebounding, the company decided to beef up the amount of chocolate in Nutella. It started to resemble the Nutella we enjoy today. And with Nutella sales booming, they even rolled out new products like Kinder, Tic Tacs and Ferrero Rocher. And Michele's son, Giovanni, 
who grew up surrounded by the chocolate business, was well-groomed to take over the enormous family empire. When Giovanni was a teenager, his father sent him and his brother Pietro to a boarding school in Brussels. And it's no coincidence that both of Michele's sons were named after the founding brothers of Nutella, Pietro Sr. and Giovanni Sr. Now, the idea was for Giovanni Jr. and Pietro Jr. to learn the business, while also learning about Western Europe, which in the late 1970s was about to become one large unified market. Giovanni may well have missed his home in Italy, but he was sent abroad for good reason. Keep in mind that this was during the Italian so-called Years of Lead, where Italy was embroiled in political violence and terrorism. As a wealthy business owner, Giovanni's father Michele must have felt that his family was a target. So, taking his sons out of Italy was not only strategic, it was survival. After boarding school, Giovanni continued with a hands-on education in the family business. He bounced around between the US, Belgium, Germany, Brazil, Argentina and Mexico. He learned the trade inside out, specialising in marketing. And it was a good thing because in 1997, he and his brother became the CEOs of the business. The two boys, by then in their 30s, were suddenly running the giant chocolate empire that had blossomed from their grandfather's original idea, Nutella. Tragically, those years working together didn't last. In 2011, Giovanni's brother Pietro was biking along the coast of South Africa near Cape Town. He loved biking and used a business trip with his father as an opportunity to go out for a training ride. At some point in the ride, he collapsed and fell off his bike. An ambulance was called, but Pietro died not long after it had arrived. Like his grandfather and his grandfather's brother, he too had suffered a heart attack. The sudden news must have been a real blow to Giovanni, who had grown up learning the business side by side with Pietro. And another blow came just a few years later when Giovanni's father, Michele, also died. Suddenly, Giovanni was thrust into the role of sole leader of the family business. And as he admits himself, it was tough. Quote, you have a lot of pressure. But despite feeling overwhelmed, Giovanni hasn't let it get to him. In fact, he's been making some bold moves. Moves that are so bold, some experts doubt the company's future. You see, Giovanni's father had always been against buying up other companies. Instead, he put all of his energy into creating and promoting homegrown products like Nutella. And it worked, clearly. But Giovanni, steeped in a newer generation of business ideas, is changing the way Ferrero does business. In 2015, he bought Thornton's. A couple of years later, he purchased Fannie Mae, Ferrara, and Nestle. Combined, the acquisitions cost Ferrero billions of dollars, with the Nestle deal alone costing 2.8 billion. This is all part of Giovanni's strategy to take over the chocolate business worldwide. But doubters point to the fact that the companies that Ferrero have purchased are recently in decline. By buying new companies, Giovanni is expanding his customers. But those customers may not last long. If some critics are to be believed, chocolates and candies are on their way out. Instead, healthy snacks will soon replace them. But, of course, only time will tell how this pans out. For now at least, Giovanni's gamble seems to have paid off. The company that once started in a tiny Italian village during World War II is now the second largest candy company in the world, right behind Mars. They did over $14 billion in revenue in 2020, and that number has been steadily increasing. For now at least, Nutella's fan base is as strong Strong as ever. Whether you eat it as an occasional treat or every day for breakfast like Giovanni did growing up, there's a good chance you've probably got a jar sitting in your kitchen right now. Now, whether or not it's healthy, well, that's another story. In fact, the company has actually had to drop some of its health claims. A class action lawsuit accused them of deceiving customers into thinking that Nutella was part of a healthy breakfast. Okay, so it's not healthy, but hey, what do you expect from a candy company? As long as they stick to what they do best, Nutella will be around for quite some time, with a lot more world Nutella days to come. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, then you might also 
also want to check out the second richest man in Italy. They call him the Godfather of Glasses. I'll leave that video on screen for you to check out now.